This conference will now be recorded. I am a EWM lead at uh, um, Cambridge, and I'll take care of all the training and project-related activities for SAP EWM. Um, I'll, before we start, I'll just give a brief background about myself. Um, I have uh, 13 years of SAP experience. Last eight years, I'm into SAP EWM. I am SAP EWM uh, certified. Prior to SAP EWM, I was working as MMWM consultant, and I'm also certified in MM and WM modules. Um, I, I'm mostly working into implementation projects, uh, and uh, I have been uh, actively involved in um, training from last uh, 10 years. And uh, I have conducted all corporate trainings, classroom trainings, and uh, also a few trainings for SAP. And I, on and off, I do a lot of online training as well. So uh, in terms of my EWM experience, uh, I have done five implementations in EWM. Uh, the latest one was in 1809 version. Uh, this uh, uh, EWM uh, training is going to be in 1809 version, and we'll be explaining you how, you know, uh, what we have in 1809, how we conduct our training, and uh, what practical exposure we give you and other things. So um, this session basically we'll uh, divide it into three parts. First, we'll talk about SAP EWM. What is it, SAP EWM? What are the benefits, advantages? And uh, overall, we'll be uh, talking about uh, the module and uh, understanding on our module, on, on this uh, module by everyone. And then second part we'll discuss about uh, we'll discuss about uh, uh, how the course is conducted, total duration, curriculum, and uh, the way um, we give our trainings, and how do we practice, and all those things. In the third part, we'll be executing few scenarios in the system to give you a feel of how EWM looks like, how and what you're going to. Uh, you know get exposed to once you're started you know uh, practicing in the system okay so uh, before we start uh, so, so this course is uh, it's for you know it's uh, basically the prerequisite of this course is you know you should have uh, understanding on inventory management part of mm or at least the basics of you know the uh, the inventory operations that happen in a warehouse like in, in a in any uh, plant for example how goods are received goods are issued what transfer postings are just the basics you know because uh, we will be anyways taking it through uh, as a scratch so uh, this uh, also okay so all our recipe guys so then it's fine so another thing i would like to mention uh, that uh, for this course there is no prerequisite to have sap wm even though you are from sap wm background even then you have to learn it from scratch so uh, just to make uh, all of you aware that sap wm is not required for this course okay all right so let's get started um, so what you can see on your screen is the, um, the I don't see any options. Um, uh, Suresh, can you help? Thiru is having some issue with connection. Yeah, yeah, I'll speak with him. I hope uh, every, uh, I hope um, others yes, can yes, see my please, screen anymore. Go ahead, I'll speak. So here we are. Okay, thank you. So here we are. You know, this is the evolution of SAP since 2018. I will have to now add a new version here, which we have recently received in September 2019. We are still to evaluate that version. That is uh, uh, SAP S4 HANA in 1909. We have a new EWM version. Okay, so um, so these are you know this is the evolution of SAP and warehouse management extended warehouse management. It started 
started in 2006 and you know with a small module uh, in the uh, in the SCM box where it was to help you know the other um, SCM modules like planning and uh, um, uh, uh, Priya is not able to see the screen uh, are others able to see the screen okay that's all uh, Priya, uh, could you yeah, please uh, rejoin? Okay, I'll, okay. I'll rejoin. All right, so, um, yeah, so SAP EWM started with, you know, a, a small uh, module, a small uh, um, warehousing option given to the other models in SCM, SNP and uh, other models that we have spare parts management in the SCM. So, uh, you know, SAP started, uh, uh, so the, you know, the warehousing business started evolving and a lot of requirements came on the warehouse side and SAP WM, which was the only solution since at that point of time, it was very, uh, you know, it was difficult to bring all this warehousing needs uh, basically i'll talk to you about what are the warehousing needs in terms of uh, in terms of it and it was getting difficult to map it in the same system and the framework was from 92 when sap started so it, there was a need to start bringing up a new model from scratch so sap started working on it i would say this is the version ewm9 version where you know it was more stable was a full-fledged solution independent solution it in nine version sap told that um ewm now it can be in a standalone separate system and it doesn't need to be with apo before that apo and ewm used to share the same instance okay so nine version till nine version we have functionality slowly coming up with sap ewm so nine version everything was there batch managed serialized managed uh, production integration which came up later wave management uh, the warehousing operations all were there and then since the nine version the basic warehousing structure was ready and then we had a lot of advanced features bring in by sap into ewm like shipping cockpit which gives uh, you know dashboard and user can see what what is coming into warehouse what's going out of the warehouse integration with transportation management which gives a next level you know integration where you know the your vehicles they are planned they're picked up in transportation management and those information is fetched to the warehouse and warehouse is ready to receive those products on the dedicated date uh, i think one more important uh, development which we see uh, in 9.2 was advanced production integration advanced production integration talks about you know uh, supplying parts of production receiving finished goods from production so it, it talks about how uh, you know how production processes are mapped with ewm again it was more of uh, erp driven i'll say erp means all other modules of sap like mm PST, uh, qm so ewm always works in integration with these other modules okay so in terms of production you know it, it is to supply parts for production receive parts from production in case of product uh, in case of uh, procurement receiving the products from vendors storing them in the warehouse in terms of uh, sales you know they create the customer creates a sale order with us and we and we and we Sorry, um, so I was saying, you know, the customer service integration with customer service where, you know, we supply parts to uh, customers and, uh, uh, you know, so the sales team gets a sale order that gets, it gets created in the system. So picking is done, goods issue is done. Same way, quality inspection, you can do the inspection at the bid level and, you know, all the informations are, you know passed on to the erp quality management 
So EWM always works with integration with other models. It has no integration with finance too. So, so this kind of advanced production integration brought a very big change where you know it was more ERP centric. Now it a lot of controls were given at warehouse level, and we were more flexibly able to deliver the products. Then uh, labor management, big, big voice speaking, you know, co directly communication with PLC. This is uh, a very good feature, you know, where previously you used to need an RSC adapter or we used to need to communicate with um, uh, the, the uh, you know, the PLCs. PLCs are like programming logical control units, you know, where probably it's a, it's a uh, so your robots or your automatic systems in your warehouse or in your production facility you know they have a unit through which they you know um, the programming is done so you send a message from sap and they get the message and they perform that particular action okay so you say pick a part so that message goes to the directly to that robot or that storage system and they perform the action and they send us a message back hey we did the performance so there was always a middleware required for communicating with such kind of uh, uh, devices that has been now you know removed with uh, uh, 9.4 version and EWM directly talks to the PLCs and other uh, such systems directly okay so so why so these are some of the important features we'll continue to talk about them in my later slides so what what does the SAP uh, warehousing needs which probably SAP WM was not fully able to, you know, deliver, and uh, SAP had to add some things in mind, you know, before uh, going with EWM or expanding EWM. So one thing is higher customer services. See the supply chain, the distribution, the warehousing has changed drastically over the period of years. So you guys will agree to me, even you will have realized in your day-to-day -day shopping, you see, you know, products moving in supply chain, how storage facilities have changed due to digitalization so many new technology terms have come up so slowly you know uh, the uh, there are few warehouses you know where there are no humans at all everything is automated right from taking the orders getting the products humans are just for delivery okay so these are modern warehouses where you know there is no need of uh, people to perform and they are directly communicating with i mean that's the futuristic nowadays we still have you know um, people doing the warehousing movements but uh, the future wise it's going to be really automated everything so so basically one prime focus in ewm has always been higher customer service so you will see uh, in outbound side you'll have a lot of good features and everything is to Cater to a customer requirement so no there can be no two customers same you know everyone will have their own requirements in terms of labeling packing you know delivery so all those flexibility should be given from the sap side to be able to deliver the parts you know you know in a required format okay then um, with all these things you know i was again to add to that with the automation storage um, and uh, automation on the movements everything uh, just to add that uh, nowadays you have the spaces are limited we don't pile up stock this inventory should be optimum so so your space in your warehouse space is limited and you have to use it to the maximum so, so you have to be efficient and you don't have to pile up stock neither you should be short of uh, products so you need to get the right parts right time okay so uh, so ewm helps you in you know managing all this um, uh, products and uh, you know planning them getting them in the right storing them in the right place and supplying them in the plant so depending on the product characteristics the movement the frequency they are stored in a warehouse so ultimately the lead time for delivery lead time for receipt should be minimum and they should be placed in a storage which is optimum as per their processes they are used as per the product characteristics and all okay so there are a lot of standard processes standard storage systems which have become standard because they are used across all the uh, different warehouses like bulk storage or you know your uh, cartonization planning 
So EWM, uh, 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 like there are some standardizations on the hazardous metal storage. EWM agrees to and you know adheres to all those standards, and you will see all all the best practices which are there in industry are already there in the standard box of EWM. Then stock transparency, EWM has different dashboards, different tools for reporting, and EWM you know generates a lot of data. You know because just imagine every product moving in the warehouse you know how much how much uh, you know thousands of materials you have how much uh, data it would generate you know every movement gets tracked with a number document number you you are performing all the movements uh, on the shop floor using rf devices and using handheld devices you're using your terminals your tab like screens on your on your um on your resources that you're using in the warehouse so it's always happening on the fly and there are you know 30 to 40 average you know warehouse workers working in an average warehouse so just imagine how much data it can generate that's so it is very important to give the uh, right information we have graphical dashboards we have uh, you know reporting transactions which gives you uh, which gives the warehouse manager the right information of what's going into the warehouse okay flexibility to order processes again as i said you know the the warehouses are no two warehouses are the same you there are some processes which are you know uh, there in a particular warehouse the other warehouse it's done in a different way so the different depending on the type of storage so how you do your receiving how you do your issues how you do other internal warehouse processes we have to EWM gives you a lot of flexibility against you know WM or any other ERP module. EWM requires a lot of flexibility. So a lot of uh, you know bodies are given, exit points are given where you can write your code. You don't have to you know design anything from scratch. Everything is there. The the um, connection points are also there where you can go and you know get your own processing done. Obviously, the configuration is also done to a greater extent. You have lots and lots of controls now to design the process the way it is. So, in a warehouse, you guys have seen, might have seen any any warehouse or any maybe a grocery retail store products moving. So, just uh, imagine that you know to your uh, warehousing aspect where you know huge piles of products are moving. So. So how do how do how is all that planning movements planned and uh, uh, you know depending on the need you may be required to directly store the part or take it to an area where you're performing some operation you want to track whatever you want to track you can track it in system okay so any any processing that you do in a warehouse you know uh, there is a standard way obviously proposed way but if your warehouse is doing something different they don't do a process in a certain way they have to uh, do something uh, slight change to the standard you don't have to build anything from scratch with different uh, um, uh, announcement points or uh, different configurations you can do it okay so these are some of the uh, key points which sap you know had in mind when developing ewm obviously this there is still wm which is used for small warehouses ewm is used for um, medium and large warehouses okay but uh, in 18 sap uh, has also brought in um, ewm in you know since i guess it was 1610 which was where it was very basic 1709 SAP um, 1709 we have EWM uh, and then we also have an 1809 1909 and slowly you know SAP is uh, bringing a lot of new uh, functionalities and we EWM of uh, S4 HANA as well so S4 HANA EWM we are going to do it in 1809 uh, training so it's like you know uh, I'll talk to you about the different deployment options that we have how um, uh, how basically different uh, EWM implementations are going on. So when a company comes to um, you know a consulting partner for implementing uh, EWM or implementing or asking for a warehousing system, so SAP currently have you know these uh, uh, deployment options which you can see on your screen. One is they can go with WM. Okay, so WM uh, 
the uh, support is only till 25 2025 and at some point uh, wm is going to be um, my great wm is going to be you know companies moving working wm will be uh, moving to ewm eventually because for the same solution as if he wants to have a single product okay so we still have wm company using wm going in s4 hana they still want to continue with wm because they don't want a drastic change they are already stable in wm so we have wm in s4 hana non s4 hana wm as a decentralized where you know all other modules are in one system and wm is in another system so why we need this centralized i'll talk about it uh, that's um, a, a standard way for most of the warehouses having decentralized so ewm we have two option ewm in s4 hana and ewm in the scm box scm is you know not the hana but before hana ewm was in scm okay so in uh, scm ewm okay you have two option one you can do is an add on in the erp system where all other modules are ewm also is in the same you know uh, same instance and that's called as embedded ewm whereas the other option is all other modules are in erp and ewm is in separate instance ewm can then communicate to different erps or the same erp system can have different warehouses in different different instances okay So now um, S4 HANA SAP has brought up. So prior to S4 HANA, decentralized EWM was used everywhere. Whatever uh, projects you will see non HANA EWM, you will see it in decentralized. Now why we use decentralized? Uh, yeah. So decentralized. So the the need of placing a decentralized having a decentralized warehouses uh, that ewm you know generates a lot of data okay so ewm needs to have a separate server close to the warehouse so just imagine if you are if you're a us based company you have a warehouse in belgium okay so if it these are other modules mm ppsd they can still use the server in us there will be slight delay but most of the time they are using desktop and other things so so it doesn't matter and uh, ewm used to have the server close to the warehouse okay so the server was separately designed okay the hardware was separately depends on the number of uh, tasks or number of uh, warehousing operations performed so uh, and how how much is the risk and most of the warehousing operations are performed on handheld devices you know on the scanners so the so scanners are like a mobile devices and they communicate directly with sap through mobile in the wi-fi of the client so so in, in the network of the client so so you, you for that desktop wired connection servers are good but when it comes to you know using um, on the rf you need a server close to the warehouse so we do have you know servers close to the warehouse so that is why there will be a separate server for warehouse in belgium and there will be central server for all the modules ewm also cannot afford to buy seven you know ewm works 20 by 7 they cannot afford the downtime of other modules like you know they are mostly the downtime planned on weekends ewm have its own since a separate server separate instance it can have its own downtime separate maintenance which is uh, less as compared to the number of maintenance cycle we have for erp so these are some of the constraints because of which uh, you know most of the time we see ewm as decentralized but in s4 hana since your server your uh, is cloud based it's going to be cloud based we will see most of the embedded version of ewm sap also have decentralized version of ewm in s4 hana now uh, where s4 hana you can have it in the same instance or in a separate instance but going forward uh, because of cloud and uh, other possibilities we are expecting most of the uh, work is going to be for embedded ewm ewm will be the same instance that erp modules it is it, it is better to have embedded because you know you are not you need to you need not to set up a integration plus same system it reduces the maintenance work you know functional maintenance data 
is in the same instance so it doesn't uh, gives you more flexibility uh, even though you know ewm is in separate instance in decentralized the, the major selling point for ewm was you know it has a standard integration with sap erp so you know there were there, there was uh, you know this integration error handling data communication was standard and was very fast okay because of the same system ewm the sap being the same uh, uh, sap products the integration was really good so that is why you know ewm uh, really picked up for uh, major warehouses okay so uh, these are you know different deployment options let me quickly give you a quick comparison of wm and uh, ewm wm is a small uh, EWM was a you know uh, EWM was a small warehousing functionality so you know we, things like replenishment picking strategy put away strategy still they are there in EWM but the way they are configured is totally different so as I told you even if you are from WM you still have to learn it for WM if you know WM functionally understanding the concept will be easier for you there is an advantage but in terms of understanding the system and in terms of uh, uh, executing the processes you will be exposed to a system which looks very different to SAP ERP and you have to make yourself uh, aware of how things are done in EWM so handling unit management a concept in uh, WM, which was like you know we manage parts you know in pallets so what is handling and handling is nothing but you know uh, a material in a packed form so for let's say i typically give an example of uh, if you buy a refrigerator or a television you get it in a carton box and there is a barcode on it that carton box with the television is a handling unit and the barcode number serial number for that is the handling unit number which represents the television and the box together okay so just imagine this is just one television one packaging material just imagine uh, you buy a box of uh, um, notebooks okay so for example you go and buy a big box of notebooks which have you know 20 notebooks in that and that box contains 20 notebooks but it is just one box okay so and one pallet number one box number for those 20 notebooks so you see um, you know pallets in for example in pepsi coke also you know that also it has a crate a crate contains you know 50 uh, pepsi bottles so you have 50 pepsi bottles and the crate has a number given to it which is nothing but a handling unit number so in industry Parts are not moved, you know, independently. They are always moved either on some wooden plank or this plastic pallets, crates that you see for, you know, milk and cold drinks. You see boxes in mostly electronics industry. So uh, you see steel frame, you know, Euro pallets, industrial pallets in mechanical automobile industries. So you have this lot of packaging materials and uh, the material is always moving in packed form. So what different it is in ewm okay this is the requirement for then in wm the way handling units are managed in ewm it's very flexible you can have one level packing two level packing nested packing picking storing power storing handling units everything is very stabilized it was really hard time with wm uh, managing handling units in complex warehouses so then yard management again part of the same box um uh, you, you can activate it, deactivate it. It is standard box. You get yard management fissure also. Something like a loading unloading, which is a very very basic requirement of warehouse. Loading unloading means like if a truck comes in a warehouse, you know, you load the take the parts out of the warehouse, you store it in the warehouse, and then you pick it from the warehouse, load it on a truck. Such simple functionalities were not there in WM, but now they are in EWM. Um, we also spoke about most of the functionalities, task interleaving labor management voice picking voice picking is again you know uh, the uh, system uh, the uh, whole warehousing seeing a change scanning the parts takes a lot of time 
but voice picking you say hi I, I pick this part automatically in the system that movements are performed so it recognizes your voice and the transactions are done in the system you have rfids also where you know you you take the part out of gate and everything in the background the goods issue and all the postings are done in the background okay you have dock appointment scheduling where the trucks trailer the carrier can come and make appointments for their trucks to come get loaded or unloaded and they can ewm can also integrate as i told you with transportation management rf um, and resource management is just one of the very good feature of ewm where you know ewm um, ewm uh, directly communicates uh, with this device with this uh, i'll just show you a picture just to help you understand so ewm you know this is your warehouse worker and this is your um, you know forklift so you can track who is executing the task whether the forklift or a warehouse worker or it's going on a on a conveyor belt the task is going on a conveyor belt and then you execute a task using mobile devices so this is your handle scanner in a warehouse you know we don't use uh, we don't use desktop at all so warehouse or shop floor just imagine people are moving around nobody has time to go to a desktop or a terminal they're moving around and they they have this in hand and they can you know uh, so a lot of new you know features are there in you we I said google also developed a similar device called as google glass you know you have a scanner which is wrapped on a wrist band okay you just scan the you know uh, band on your wrist and you can just like an apple watch you have a screen where you can execute your transactions so a lot of new things are coming up but the whole idea is you know through scanning we get the information in the system and we execute the task so ewm manages which labor is doing how much task what is the efficiency what is the workload ewm manages which resources does what task you know task and resource management is very important so forklift with 5 ton capacity should only be assigned a workload of 5 tons and less right similarly a forklift not allowed to enter in a certain area because there is no space for the forklift to go in that area okay so um so such kind of controls restrictions so so are there and these are whole uh, entirely configured in the system you are not required to uh, make any changes to them okay uh, in a day to day life because as i said in ewm uh, it's fully automated you know people work on rf guns as per the setup and there is uh, there is no need for people to go on desktop so that is why you know the implementation takes a lot of time and there is a lot of you know requirements for good ewm implementation guys because it it is, it is one time activity where the requirement has to be properly mapped into the system so which resources are there which tasks are going to be performed to them how the it's it's not only you know in the technical stuff but it's also designing the warehouse with the design team on how efficiently we can perform so once ewm is implemented everything is automated the, the guys they get their work based on their the there is capability for a user also a user can be skilled semi skilled high skilled um, so based on that his capability work will be sent to him so nobody is going and assigning work everything as per the setup you have done in the system the work gets assigned and the user operator or a forklift does perform that operation it's not only you know human or forklift somebody doing it automatic conveyors also you know get work assigned to them based on their you know um, based on the setup that we do in the system okay um so so you can see you know your boxes pallets handling units labels how do you scan them so this is one of the you know important uh, feature of ewm you know where you um where you manage it resources labor okay um you directly communicate with the systems uh talk appointments you take appointments others are you know pretty much technical uh uh, advanced features available in physical inventory like dynamic cycle counting direct integration with waybridge analytics s4 hana has a good analytics tool available so sorting rearrangement so these are you know uh, brief or high level functionalities that we see in a warehouse okay so uh, 
so i think uh, any questions so far you know any anything you want to like to discuss um on the module sap ewm module any questions yeah hi i'm ankit this side i'm uh, already working yeah. as mm consultant uh, see uh, as like this is a embedded as like in future we will go for embedded one which is on hana right or yeah uh, okay so in terms of as like when when we start any any project there's a, you know activities to play blueprint and other activities so that we will cover by you as like how we how we'll get a real uh, of, of course not real project but a uh, feel of a real project something like that. okay so um all right so this is basically you know ewm um, what a good point i was about to cover it in the how the in the next part where we talk about the course big how the course is conducted but to answer your question so this course is basically you know uh, moves as a as a uh, we do it as a case study project okay so ewm is better understood if you are you have a example in front of you you can visualize the things then technically it is you can understand only when you know you understand the physical things of you know how it is operating so we take a case study project of a pump manufacturing we have a bill of material raw materials semi finish finished goods we will be producing this part so we are going to uh, demonstrate a pump industry how it works how the products are received stored in the warehouse how they supply to production how the finished goods are received and how they get integrated with the warehouse how the urban processes are done so this is a warehouse layout and we will be implementing this warehouse together you know while we are uh, getting us ourselves trained so we have a lot of you know um, so we we have done a lot of research for this um, uh, case study project and uh, we you will we will be taking you you know a pump manufacturing process a typical pump manufacturing how it looks so the parts which you are going to supply we are going to see them you know getting manufactured supplied we have a lot of videos to you know help you understand the product then we have we have a you know a, a 3d representation of the warehouse where you know all these things we can show you how the processes are happening in a warehouse how the pallets rackings are stored which operations is happening where you have you know cranes you have so as you said you know you to give you a real time feel most so our aim is you know ewm mostly you will be getting an implementation project or even though if you are in a if you are supporting a plant or if your plant is under stabilization still you need to uh, you know you will be able to um, uh support or you know you will be able to uh, handle the project once you understand the terms relating how they are related to the physical uh, actions being performed in the warehouse so this is what you know we'll be uh, covering and uh, as i said you know every process we have a standard way uh, and a way which we have done plan for this case study project we'll be doing this case study project understanding the standard way and depending on you know our a um, group we will be also you know at times uh, you know discuss and change the process let's say for our so this is the last batch this for this batch we decide a structure we prepare it and then we say hey in bond is for a pump the in bond is we unload it and then we take to deconsolidation quality then we move it let's say we decide among ourselves between deconsolidation let us have another area where we are going to relabel the pallet so we are going to have a relabeling station we are going to print it so small tweaking will be doing you know based on the team the their experience so this is the proposal of a, a warehouse which we are going to implement and execute all our processes okay thank you okay any other questions on the uh, warehouse uh, on sap ewm as a module anyone has any questions 
so just one more question from my side as well. uh as like uh, i am not having much deep knowledge about wm part as you do just now that you do need the uh, prior knowledge of wm as like the basic knowledge of m until transfer order is there with me so that much is enough as like when we start the course that that things will you know will not uh, yeah 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 this is enough you know um i i just told you you know this uh even though you had a knowledge you still had to do it so leave it to us you know on your uh, giving you a practical overview or giving you mm-hmm. you know uh, real time understanding of how things are leave it to us having a understanding of mm and it's enough for us yeah. we we'll take care of other uh hi this is suresh uh, so adding to the previous question like um, so how uh, basic knowledge required on handling units management like uh, very basics or we need to uh, have some minimum basics you don't need you don't need to have uh, any basic knowledge of handling units see any uh, warehousing you know so handling unit is a warehousing function so we will be covering it from scratch what a handling unit is you know what are resources so with some you know, with these uh, real time examples that we were talking about a pepsi or a television so we will be understanding them see technically um, don't worry okay one more important point is for our warehouse we will be not doing any setup in advance we'll be doing everything from scratch together in our sessions so we will be setting up a new from manufacturing plant we'll be setting up the warehouse so we'll be activating handling unit from start we'll be using handling unit for doing put away picking automatic handling unit creation so over the period of you know uh, time or while we are doing this uh, training you will be uh, you know you will get a whole understanding of handling units so what basically we we basically expect expect you is to know is you know uh, ewm does uh, when we do a ewm transaction okay you do a, let's say a purchase order you do a good receipt in ewm so that goes and creates a material document in erp okay so so we won't be covering you know what a what a purchase order material document means you know and uh, what is one one posting so some some basics of you know sap uh, let's say if you are from sales side what happens after you know we did a goods issue we are not talking about you know invoicing to the customer or raising uh, a debit note credit note so we'll stop at the inventory movement you know so the other part you know see it's, it's an integrated module so uh, we will be you know creating a purchase order we will be not going into details of what a rfq is what a purchase requisition is so only the inventory part we will be covering it in more details so other areas we'll create a production order but how the production planning is done we will be creating a very basic purchase or production order creating a work centers yes sorry give me okay so uh, we'll be creating a production order supplying the products to the you know production and again you know in how the product will take create a production order we will it's in a testing system but you know the other side of production you know that we'll have to explore as said we'll focus more on the warehousing in warehousing any concept warehousing related we'll be covering from scratch so don't worry about it. okay so, so the reason why uh, ask this question is like i feel like the ew uh, ewm has more exposure to handling units compared to warehouse management so yeah yeah so don't worry about it we will be talking about everything you know about see uh, this module which this uh, training which we are going to take it's not uh, you know not only restricted to um you know the technical things as i told you you know so you so we we will be see the app will be seeing the application of handling units also while we are creating it okay so so we'll be talking about different enhancements also okay so let's say a typically handling unit 
this is the problem you know we have this experience this is the problem with handling units which we face in wm now it's not there we'll be discussing those or most of the time you know this is the pain point in terms of handling unit which people have in ewm so this is what the announcement we generally do so we will be giving you a lot of you know uh, so a lot of uh, you know inputs on how to stabilize your or what are the key uh, developments announcements that we do if we see any problem in the original solution provided by you. okay thank you yeah uh, hi uh, actually you know just we are getting some uh, disturbance from your end it seems rohan is it from my end is it from my yes. end yeah 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 Okay, no problem. Um, is it some background? Yeah, yeah, now it's good. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, I think I have blocked my mic or something. All right. So, any any other questions on EWM module? Anything anybody would like to discuss? Yeah, sir. I want to know about the uh, EWM server that we have to practice. Mm hmm. Uh, in terms yeah, of EWM server, you know, yeah, yeah that will, will be provided. Be provided with, yeah, yes. 18 version is what we are going to use for our um, training, and uh, I think Suresh can will probably connect you and he'll guide you. You know, uh, how much duration or how you're going to connect. So it's all set up. So the same server we are going to use for our training, the same will be provided to you. So the whole idea is, you know, uh, while we are doing this training, you will have to do it, you know, in uh, parallel with me. Okay, we will be whatever I do, you have to do it offline. Let's say I create a warehouse today, I set up integrated the warehouse, so same thing, you have to do it. And then I'll be giving you a lot of assignments and evaluation question answers to see where you are on that particular topic. So you'll be getting a lot of, uh, you know, activities uh, to do in your warehouse. So we will be doing a lot of practicing so yeah so we will be sharing the same system so don't worry about the system okay sir what will be the core structure actually all right i think let's uh, move on to the second part where we talk about the course i'll just open the course curriculum here uh, so this is uh, basically 40 to you know 45 hours course depending on the batch size and you know discussion that take place the idea is to complete all the topics uh, and when once uh, you and our we uh, i am both are comfortable in you know <clears throat> in those uh, topics uh, you are comfortable that yeah i understood and my practice and working well maybe there is no uh, a hard and fast you know 40 hour deadline or something like that 40 hour equals something like that we will be completing all the topics uh in a, in a decent speed uh understandable to all and uh once um, with the speed which all of us are comfortable with so uh it will start first with you know org structure We'll set up the org structure. We'll do an integration between ERP and EWM. So basically, these are 11 units. I'll show you one by one each unit uh, in my training slides as well. So we'll set up the structure, org structure within EWM. What are the storage type bins, activity areas? We'll set up the master data. Then we'll do the RF setup. You know, as I told you, why RF setup is important because all the warehousing processes are done on the RF devices. Okay. So uh, we will be setting up the RF. We'll be setting up the reporting transactions like on monitor, graphical framework, so that you know we uh, while we are executing the processes, we can see them on the dashboards. Okay. Then then we'll start the processes. Uh, Rohan, so just one, one, yeah. one, one more. Uh, yeah. Uh, Ankit, this said uh, as like in the RF setup you're seeing here. So in embedded one and in the you know the, the separate box system like generally we do in ECC and you know separate box of EWM. So uh, mm -hmm. as like there the SIF and other uh, other way they uh, they do it. So in the same way, uh, Hana also work in the same way for the data transaction. Mm -hmm. No, for master data, ah, you don't need to save yeah, for anything. Yeah. So, the 
sniffing is not at all required but you know we need to do a integration between erp and ewm so still erp and ewm they talk to each other using ale you know with rfc communication so we do have to we uh, do still need to do that integration so that's what we'll be covering initially so it's like you know we are just imagine this whole setup is like we go for a project the first thing that we do is do the org structure then we integrate the systems then we do the you know uh, structure elements master data then the supporting uh, monitor and other uh, framework like rf which are going to help in the process then we start doing the processes okay so then we'll do the inbound process outbound process different variants in that and then from section 6 onwards we'll go into the inbound outbound process how they are done for complicated warehouses like yard management how do we use creation rule to control what users are you know um, supposed to perform how we can bring that controls and rules in the system storage control how do we map the warehouse processes into the system so 6 7 8 is to do inbound outbound basic process to how to you know make them uh, equipped for complex warehouses and then we talk about internal warehouse process posting changes replenishment physical inventory then finally in section 5 we talk about topics which are cross and which are kind of advanced functionalities like labor management ppf value added service skidding cross docking material flow systems um so all those we will be covering and in bound and outbound also we'll be talking about how the you know productions are integrated how the strategies are what is waves availability group integration with quality management slotting and rearrangement how do we integrate uh, with uh, erp with availability groups all those things we are going to talk in our sessions so every session basically we have uh, 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 so basically we uh, let me take you through for example good receipt process okay so every session we have uh, you know uh, this is a uh, unit 4 where we have five topics as per the um as per our uh, course content so each of this uh, topic will be going objectives understanding them in screenshots you know going through every bit transaction course everything is given and uh, we'll going through screenshots understand different variations in inbound process what are the other supporting uh, you know topics in terms of this uh inbound processing and then we talk about you know what are the summarize what we discussed so there will be certain session topics like for example here we talk about the topic understand we do some demo in the system so wherever i am doing a demo i'll i'll paste a, a word i paste a word document what configuration what uh, master data and how we tested so that when you are doing it yourself you don't have to go through recordings you can just go through this everywhere we have pasted the t codes and other things so it will help you when you are doing it yourself so third topic availability group understand the objectives go through the concepts conf important configuration do the testing in the system and then whatever testing we did you have a document also for that okay similarly you know qi wherever reference sap document while we implement you know apart from books there are a lot of sap documents which we you know come across uh, we'll be sharing with you such important documents where to use it how to use it we'll be you know letting you know okay again everywhere you'll find this uh, same you know way of uh, our presentation so we use this presentation extensively and uh, we will be doing a lot of whiteboard uh, discussions where we draw discuss and understand any process and then obviously when we are doing it we have a case study uh, slides with us where we, which we as and when refer when we are doing the processes okay so same thing you will be finding for all our uh, topics all 11 topics you will be finding you know a uh, slide deck and uh, same approach of uh, presentation okay so this is pr pr uh, process oriented storage control how do we set up how do we test it understanding of the concept okay so everywhere we will get all the information so that whatever we are doing you can try it offline 
uh, plus we'll be uh, you know sharing with you sap upload templates um, whatever supporting list of transaction table whatever books whatever uh, things are required uh, for you to independently sap uh, documents to independently work we will be sharing with you all those uh, information as in when we cover each topic so for example structure element every any topic you know we will be going this way understand let's say what are the different structures you know how do we configure it you know what are the difference so all these things we'll be covering in detail uh, while we go through the training so um, again as i as i said you know we are going to do everything from scratch so for example in this warehouse you know uh, you see you can see we have a data sheet where we create a use the standard code we create our own plant own store location own warehouses purchase organization sales area and then we integrate it so whatever systemize this integration you know these are the reference you need to copy and while integrating these are some technical things which you need to keep in mind so uh, how do they talk to each other some technical information so we will be updating this and keeping it handy for our batch as well okay so uh, this is how you know basically we we do our tradings and uh, okay yeah and any question on you know the course or how do we do training um, i think this is what i wanted to have a quick discussion with you all yes atul uh, sir uh, i want to know some implementation part when we doing the case study so we will do from the scratch Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, is, is this right? Like it's a, a yes, implementation yes. project. Like yeah. means we have to prepare the edges document blueprints like that one. Yeah, already you no, no, no. no, no, we will not be see we will be not preparing documents. Okay. Why we will not be preparing? Because you know, if we start preparing documents, we will uh, move from our main objective of uh, and we'll spend time in documentation so we'll not be preparing documents this so just imagine the company is there the company you know this company we have to implement all standard sap processes so right. you are this is you are this is a just imagine this is a greenfield implementation and this is the 2b process for you not so, we don't will not go with as is in 2b because mm -hmm. you know if you our aim is to understand the system the uh, product so if we go into consulting we may you know divert from our main uh, um, topic of ewm so we need to understand first what is standard and while we do that we'll be discussing hey in this there is there was a requirement for a customer where we did so and so announcement what is the announcement point we note it down we move ahead okay okay Okay. or you know people like you who have a good sap experience you know they will say hey what of the months the client told me such and such requirement or i visualize in a warehouse this is how it should be done so yes we will discuss we'll find out a standard way of doing it if not okay. we'll we'll see the announcement points or how to approach that problem and how to solve it okay sir. okay okay thank you any other questions okay all right uh, so suresh you have something uh no i'm good uh, so we are going uh, in a phased up approach right for this project like i mean for this course and starting with setting up our yeah. system and going to uh perform all the operations and going to see real time examples right like on phase second phase third phase yes 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 so this is how you know we plan to do and uh, so uh this is adding this is yeah please go ahead. yeah tell me, tell me. No, adding no, to no, the previous 
uh, question uh, which are posted by some of the student like uh, so like what we are expecting of the, the completion of this course is since we are all working in wm i mean like many people so they will uh, put me in a in a small implementation project we are expecting so if you have like after like love one or two hour sessions after completion of the course about the documentation part also it would be great for us what i'm feeling uh, in terms of documentation you're asking uh, the uh, uh, adding to the, the last implementation part. documentation yeah correct um, okay so we all right so then you know we we will be talking about you know the function see, you see this documentation probably we will not be you know spending one or two sessions but we'll be talking it throughout the you know project for example i will tell you okay this is rf setup how it is done we see at least two or three announcements in the rf and this is how you need to write your functional specs okay so for example a moros monitor it's a reporting transaction people uh, do get two or three ricefs in this monitor area and this is how you write your fs and for writing fs these are the key points you need to do it so as as functional consultants so now uh, in again we will be talking about a lot about imp implementation methodologies with s4 hana people don't go with the concept of a blueprint as is to be there is something called as model company Okay, where SAP suggests a standard company, um, a model company approach to an industry, depending it's a process industry, it's automobile, it's chemical or whatever, they suggest a template to them. And in that template, we, we first uh, execute the process and then we uh, bridge the gap wherever you know the standard process doesn't map to client requirement so the whole approach has changed implementation approach has changed with s4 hana okay so so the document wise most of the time we'll be using sap documents how we do it we will be definitely covering because you know model company how model companies are implemented what are the documents required so basically as functional consultants we still have to prepare test scripts we still have to prepare functional specs these are the two important things we go so depending on what approach your business chooses you know in terms of uh, requirement gathering or blueprinting some still go with the old way of creating a blueprint some go with model company we don't need you know a blueprint document model company says just document your you know key uh, important decision points in some some specific doc design document which is not as extensive like a blueprint so yeah so we will be discussing about uh, these things don't worry you know it, it's not only um, uh, it's like your uh, uh, it's not only you know just be, uh, technically i show you how standard sap performs it, it's a it's to make you ready for implementation so don't worry about the documentation so again the format may change but if the content the main content which a functional consultant should add that will make sure you you guys are uh, equipped enough to do it uh, yourself thank you so even if don't worry even if uh, you guys need any help after the training also we are there to support you um, as a community we will be staying connected and in touch with each other Okay. All right. So let's um, let's do a quick uh, you know run through the system. So just uh, to show you, you know, we I'm going to um, show you how a EWM system looks like, how we do a particular transaction in the system. So this is you know a transaction called as PRDI inbound delivery. So inbound delivery, when you create an ERP, it gets automatically replicated to EWM. Okay, so once it is in EWM, we do further processing like good receipt, put away. So, so this is a, you know a delivery. I can show you, you know, maybe I can create a quick delivery for a purchase order, and we can see the delivery coming to EWM, and we can do further actions on that delivery so i'm just going to demonstrate you a receiving process 
okay i'm just going to take an existing purchase order here okay and uh, we will be doing a receipt and a put away for that purchase order okay so let's say i take this purchase order and uh, so i hope uh, you can you can see this is in the same instance you know so it's really uh, uh helpful you know uh, in terms of otherwise you have to log in into separate system and you know start up process so this, so, is, so this is the same system this is the same system we are working right it's it's a, uh, it's a hana one yeah right? this is same yeah this is same 1809 which we are going to use for our training okay so you can see this is a purchase order okay I'm just trying to I'll just try to create a delivery for this purchase order and receive it okay, in EWM. So let's see how we do that. So purchase order is created, sent to the vendor. The vendor sends us a notification that they have dispatched the products. So once they send us the notification, we create a delivery or the delivery is created through EDI. So let's say this is for 20. So we still use the delivery concept uh, like we use it in ERP. EWM always communicates with via deliveries to ERP. Okay. So here you can see um, the warehouse 21 has come. The statuses are blank. Yep. Like from Dublin, anyone from Dublin can correlate this data getting updated when we use Dublin, but in EWM it is blank. So you have store location, quantity, we save the delivery. So this is a EWM manage. So basically, so you can see delivery three one seven got created, and I go and search it here. So delivery got created, and you can see message distributed to WMS. That is warehouse management system. Go here. I look for it. I can search it with purchase order also since I have copied it. So I think this is the one, the latest one. I can see in the reference whether it is the same one. 317 yeah i think we just created 317 so this is a delivery dot that got created came to ewm so you can do a receipt here or we can do the receipt via rf transaction okay so once we do the receipt then we can place it into the warehouse okay so you can see i have done a receipt here so that receipt will go and you know do good receipt here you know like if you see uh, that receipt in ewm has posted a good receipt here a material document would have got created see it is c and a material document got created yep. so again you know i have set up um, handling units here uh, automatic creation of handling units so the handling units are getting created automatically here based on my pack spec these are the handling units all those handling units are also moved to erp system These are the handling units that I create and just received. Now, next, I want to place it into the warehouse. So I'll do a put away. So again, you know, just to, you know, just for ourselves to get used to it. I'm just, you know, using desktop. We can also use RF. Maybe let me try doing a put away on RF. Okay. So the same transaction you can do in RF screen. I'm just going to put it into a storage bin. I'll create a task. So system created this order. This is like a transfer order, you know. So we have task and orders in system. This is a handling unit, you know, which I have to take it to this bin. Okay. So how do I do that? I will do it on RF. Let's say good receipt. I do it on desktop for doing RF. You know, for your RF, we have a simulation screen. So this is a simulation screen where we, you know, do all the RF transactions. Mm. 
just trying to find a forklift which is not used so you can see forklift i'm you i'm just telling the system you know which um which uh, resource i'm using so i'm doing a inbound process put away we're going to put away by handling unit this is the handling unit 80053 okay f7 i think we need to change the queue assignment so i'm not supposed to execute that you know order i told you you know like uh, i'm not supposed to execute that task because not of control which we have done it in the, in the system now i've just cleared that control now it should allow me to do a receipt put away put away why is it is telling me to hey go to this bin i reach the bin i scan the bin and then this is a simulation transaction it's a small transaction uh, simulation which you can see on your gun rf gun okay so now let's go and see the stock okay and just see the delivery status so we did receipt we did put away and let me go here and uh, i'll open the task that i just confirmed i'll pick this where else put away is partially complete you can see over here and i'll show you the task it's you know confirmed it got confirmed by this resource you know so it can be a fork layer it can i've done it manually my name is appearing that means i've done it manually okay so now it's in the bin now i need to see where it is in the bin so i need to take i'll copy this handling it and i'll see the stock so for seeing the stock as i told you we just have one transaction called as monitor which has all the reports of ewm we just go in here execute it stock and bin handling unit i just go and tell the system show me this handling in it it will show me the handling in it and uh, mm, 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 oh, oh sorry i think uh, this storage is you know without handling in it so it loses the handling unit information so this is again you know control is in config whether you want to store handling unit information in the system or you don't want to store i say i want to receive it but when it comes here just lose the information so they have this you know stock has been added in this bin r401 i received five they might be 10 before this so you can see all the stock information here gr date and everything quantity weight so this is the bin you know it is similar to your wm bin but the number of characters are uh, you know it's 18 character field compared to wm okay so i think this is how you know this is just to give you a brief insight you know how uh, ewm transactions are uh, executed okay so okay um i think this by this i covered the third part of our demo today just a summary or, or execution of a transaction to give you a feel of uh, ewm system so this is in s for 1809 so that's it from my end any questions anything related to anything that we discussed today any queries uh, sir ewm is also on table base we have to use the tables yeah table we still use table but you know the program is slightly different we use you know dynamic variables and we use uh, object oriented programming but yeah ultimately the data gets stored in tables as well yeah. okay so somewhat technical uh, uh technical knowledge also comes here no you don't need technical knowledge but you know mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to program as ew consultant you're not going to do write any code or programming so no need to you know understand that things only thing is you should be able to write functional specification how to identify table go and get the details from the understand the flow it's pretty much the same how we used to do in erp 
okay okay uh, sir like uh, uh, in mm we have to so many processes like sto subcontracting right mm -hmm. uh, same is happen with the ewm also if there are uh, processes like that one see ewm runs across across uh, you know modules so for mm -hmm. example in mm you do sto okay right, sto right. you do good issue right yep. so now that good issue you cannot do it from migo you have to do it from ewm so yeah, sto mm -hmm. also you need ewm for a subcontracting me 2 o n you have to you do ewm to pro use ewm to do good picking and goods issue receiving okay. of finished goods again you have to do ewm to so ewm is going to use everything that you do in inventory management you will not at all use migo batch to batch mm -hmm. transfer bin, uh, you know uh, metal to metal transfer everything from ewm uh, okay changes stock type change entire inventory management goes to ewm you um your uh, sales side you do uh, customer returns you do basic customer processing you do rush orders everything processing that goes from ewm okay, okay. so after this course uh, we can go for the certification as well and the questions are and the support will be from your side as well yeah yeah right yeah yeah sure we will be also sharing with you know as i told you giving evaluation questions to evaluate yourself to the topics we have sample question papers four sample question papers which you know you can try out and you know track your progress and if you're comfortable you can go with certification yeah thank you So oh, I have a question regarding the practice uh, link which you are share, uh, which you are going to share. Uh, is it like a pop up pop up things that something gets installed in our system? Like, uh, can we use it in our business laptops? Or... Sorry, can we? Can we use it in our business laptop, like office laptops? That link. Or we need to carry our personal laptops. Like any pop-up kind of thing comes and installs in our system, or I think access. Oh, no, I think, coming over access. I think uh, maybe Suresh can answer your question. Uh, okay. Suresh, do we use remote desktop, or you know, they can add it in their office GUI? Yeah, we have both. Both options. Okay. Yeah. But you do, we don't need to, you just need GUI or, you know, I, I think there is one more good question coming up. I'm not sure who is this live uh, session. We asked him, live session, who has asked this question, Fury? May, I, may we know your name, Suresh is looking for your name. Uh, my, I am Suresh, my name is Suresh. You are from me. Okay, so uh, I mean, uh, no, no, I think um, Suresh was looking for uh, who, whose name is live session. So Suresh, he is Sharik. His name is Sharik, who has uh, was logged in as live session. Yes, Sharik. Oh, yeah, Sharik. So there is a question from Sharik. Uh, Fury apps, we will get an overview. Yes, yes. But in S4 HANA, you know, SAP has brought in Fury apps. We'll be doing a lot of transactions on fury apps so fury apps is like you know uh, a change in ui okay so we have this fury launchpad will opening open the fury transactions and what transactions prdi we saw there we can also do it use, using fury as well this is a fury transaction basically this is fury login And you can use it for all your testing as well. Fury is just for users, but we can get an idea of it uh, during our session. And uh, as consultant, we still use GUI. So you can see create inbound delivery, same warehouse monitor. You know, I'm opening through Fury. Shipping cockpit, this RF transaction also, we have Fury tiles.
query is a bit slow compared to you know the server speed the internet speed uh, network so it's, it's generally slow for testing or uh, practicing but yeah we will be understanding fury as well okay i think it may take time active pop up blocker Nell just sort it out. It's just some pop-up blocker is stopping it. But yeah, we will use this theory uh, as well to you know test our transactions and execute our transactions. Anything else, guys? okay if uh, no further questions let us uh, end the session for today so uh, let us know if you still have any questions Suresh can arrange a separate call if you have any queries or doubts and uh, hope to see you all soon thank you bye yeah uh, thanks guys uh, th thanks for attending the session and uh... I'll give you a call you know, just in uh, a couple of minutes. Uh, you know, just we'll discuss uh, regarding the timings and all. Okay. Thank you. Okay.